Father, we thank you for the warm skies you've given us and for the sunshine. But we also pray for those that may still be en route to give them safety of travels. Watch over the squadron for its safety and its health, Father, and help us uh, bring in more members. And we just pray for those that may be ill to give them support. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome on the morning. Today's third. Yeah, this is it. Uh, the month that flies. Hopefully, the dogs day wasn't too bad for everybody, and hopefully, we get some taxes going back. Um, anyway, so we will use this day as emergency salute training, and I will give an overview of the Pound uh, Group 3 Sarak uh, Special Rescue Exercise. At least from air crew perspective. Uh, Size? At least from air crew perspective. As, uh, as uh, because crew. I did participate as, uh, as an air crew. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> like TV, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seven second delay. <laughs> before we dive deeper into that, a um, few updates on our aircraft um, and some other general updates. Uh, Everything seems to be moving along, not as fast as we hoped it would be, and not as smooth, but uh, keeping my fingers crossed, we should get uh, 216 Charlie Papa 226 here on Sunday. So we already reserved it, we already accepted the transfer. It's uh, fixed, it, it, it has new uh, um, governor and prop out of overhaul. Um, and it's been flying silently, nobody mentioned to us that it's fixed and it's ready for, for transfer. But I just checked uh, uh, Flight Radar 24 and I thought I mean, it's been flying for a week. <laughs> so uh, I initiated the transfer, the transfer was uh, approved, uh, but then the obstacles started to come up. So the aircraft is being used for repair mission and actively used. The backup aircraft 7437 uh, Charlie Papa is currently at, uh, here at Riverside. Uh, just finished 100 hour uh, inspection and maintenance. And it's ready, ready for, for Whiteman Air Crew to pick it up. Uh, I believe it should be up there on the ramp and ready to go. Uh, so once that aircraft moves to Whiteman, uh, we have no excuse anymore that, uh, that there is no aircraft for the Reaper mission. So Terry uh, fought the battle and we have an agreement at the wing level that the aircraft is indeed moving here. And we reserved it on schedule. Uh, myself and Terry somehow will get to Gillespie Field and bring it here on this Sunday morning. Um, that one second, uh, I understand that Jumping to turbo aircraft for pilots may be a little bit uh, too much. Uh, so we are bringing here 887 Charlie Papa from Palm Springs. It's fully functional. It has a couple of simple uh, discrepancies, nothing um, limiting the, the use of aircraft. I have flown that aircraft uh, this uh, this weekend. Uh, same issue with uh, discharge uh, in flight, showing 1.5 negative um, uh, on emitter on main, uh, and it doesn't look like actually discharge is happening. It looks like bad sensor, which um, the, sh the, the maintenance shop didn't catch, because it doesn't pronounce itself on the ground. On the ground, everything checks out, checks out fine. Uh, but in flight, consistently 1.5 negative. Um, the autopilot works. It's a Cap 140 autopilot, but uh, kind of um, wonky. I 
probably wouldn't fly it at uh, at least at lower speeds we didn't test it uh improves we just hand flown the aircraft all the time according to other pilots who have done form flights in it uh, looks like it works normally at higher speeds normal cruise and so on and so forth uh, so it seems like at low speeds uh, right under 90 knots uh, it starts uh, uh, exceeding the limitation on uh, elevator pitch trim uh, and gives uh, enunciation after which we just disconnect the autopilot and hand fly it so once we complete as many onboarding as possible, we will probably take it back to cable for additional review. Uh, but the previous issue with their data computer was resolved by uh, the transfer from leading edge, um, and there was no need for relocating the aircraft to the shop. Any questions on aircraft situation? So the alternator leads were swapped, maybe? Oh, interesting. But it still would charge. Well, if the photogrammer is showing the charge of the wing, but it's not showing the flight, and it's not reversing, it would be a negative charge of the wing, because the RPM is down, but a higher RPM is charging. And 1.5 amps, 2 amps would be charged airborne. Okay, that's worth the try. There was uh, a, an attempt to troubleshoot it uh, at the alternator level uh, by the mechanic at uh, John Wayne. And the re report was that um, the alternator is fine, but I'm not sure if they checked the connections and stuff. I don't know. Okay, so we expect actually to have 887 here tomorrow if I manage to go somehow to Palm Springs and bring it here um, uh, and my work schedule permits. So if anyone is interested in driving me to Palm Springs <laughs> in the morning, or not really in the morning, probably closer to noon so I can fly it here, that would be great. I I'm not available on Thursday. If we are not moving it tomorrow, then maybe I'll move it on Friday. Um, so that's it, and we're probably going to use 887 uh, to fly Terry to Gallaspy Field, uh, so he can fly it, the, the second aircraft here. And we will be, so I highly recommend uh, at least high PIC pilots to go through onboarding as, much, as fast as you can possibly do it. Uh, so we can actually get you next into the um, the repermission uh, training once that is scheduled. So sometime in, in May, probably mid-May, we will have um, an event here for training for that. All right, what's next? So let's talk about the actual search and rescue exercise. So. Next time it happens in Palm Springs, I highly recommend everyone from Group 3 to attend that event because due to the distance to Palm Springs, it was pretty much an event limited to Group 3, meaning that uh, there was plenty of opportunity for training. Okay, so um, it was kind of exclusive event. Unfortunately, the wind got in the way and in the afternoon, like typically, at, on Saturday, it was at about 2 p.m., the wind picked up pretty bad, so gusting up to 30 in just half an hour. From gusting 15, gusting 30 in half an hour. That was pretty dramatic, and I'm pretty happy we didn't take off. <laughs> Landing would be interesting, uh, at least for the trainees, you know, the, the, those people who are trying to get things um, done. Uh, we only managed to fly two sources per day, so two airplanes, two air crews, 
uh, departing on Saturday, we took off at, uh, I believe, 10.30ish, the engine start, and we've been back on the ground. Uh, my air crew was back uh, in under two hours because uh, the mission scanner and training got uh, air sick. Um, the second air crew took more advantage of training and they spent more time out flying. Uh, the second day, I focused on training the mission pilot and uh, Chuck was actually working on his airborne photographer rating. Uh, and we spent a little bit over two hours flying, um, two different scenarios. Uh, and I, I will actually dive deeper into scenarios uh, in just a moment. Uh, let me load my browser and stuff. So the way typically the SARX is arranged, uh, it usually starts with checking in at about 8 in the morning. Um, there is an optional...
more. So the hybrid is just a relay, a communication relay, flying a little bit higher, making sure that the messages are transmitted from air crew to command, from air crew to the ground, and so on and so forth. Uh, so two airplanes, two taskings, right? So the, in the afternoon, we were expected to have one more tasking for uh, uh, reconnaissance on uh, Coachella Festival, uh, which was in progress. There was a TFR above that uh, camping area and stage, uh, but TFR, to my surprise, was kind of low, just 400 AGL. Mm -hmm. And there was, at least in the morning, plenty of uh, GA aircraft hanging around just above the TFR, trying to snap a picture or whatever. Uh, so we didn't even try to fly there. Uh, it was very busy. ATC was very busy trying to keep everyone safe in the air and so forth. And uh, unfortunately, in the afternoon, just before we decided we were ready to go, the air, the, the, the winds picked up. Uh, so we aborted both of, both of the sorties. So we came back and took an opportunity to do some ground training uh, for air crews. So I just received my uh, mission pilot set uh, qualification. So now I can train pretty much on all air crew. I can train mission scanner. I can train on mission observer. I can train on mission pilot. Uh, so if you need any of that, reach out to me. Apart from the next, uh, the, the following weekend, um, uh, I am available. Not this weekend, the weekend after next. I am available for maybe smaller group uh, uh, training. And uh, the next day, I actually uh, used some of those uh, skills to train a, a, a new mission pilot who is going through onboarding. Uh, Jason Cavalli, he has plenty of experience. Uh, he is uh, uh, working for. California Highway Patrol and recently got assignment uh, for the um, uh, group who flies Cessna 206 out of uh, Apple Valley. So he's still going through training. He's not yet 206 qualified, but he has uh, adequate, exper uh, adequate experience for, for the role of, uh, of mission pilot. So the next uh, day we had two taskings. One was uh, uh, for the air crew, which I was leading. Uh, one was uh, actual reconnaissance of the area over the Coachella, and there were three aircraft that hanging around, the towing banners, uh, they were going in circles uh, right around the area, and we flew about a thousand feet above, uh, Chuck was uh, taking some pictures, I was hoping Chuck would be here so he potentially could show the pictures he has taken, uh, but we were supposed to upload all the pictures on the um, uh, California wing uh, share points, so maybe I'll find them and I'll at least show what, what, what was happening uh, shortly after this formal review. And I sent you a link to those pictures, Andre. Oh, okay. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> so you have uh, your grandson delivered? I have right? a brand new grandson, David. David and Daniel Dillon are my two grandsons now. <laughs> Congratulations, D double grandpa. <laughs> All right, so Chuck, maybe later you can give your first-hand experience with, with the stars. All right, and the second, uh, the first asking was done pretty quickly, maybe under about half an hour, a little bit more than that, and uh, we reported to the base, they gave us another tasking to assess uh, the, no the north shore of uh, Salton Sea for possible flooding. Not much of flooding at the Salton Sea, <laughs> even in present conditions, but nevertheless we went there and uh, it gave an opportunity to the mission pilot in training uh, to fly different uh, patterns uh, and for the airborne photographer sitting in the back to take pictures from different angles and different resolution and so forth. And that took us about two hours, uh, so then we reported uh, we are done without asking, so no new <coughs> assignments were done. We were hoping to get back on, in time and give another air crew an opportunity to go and, and, and do some training. But by the time we finished, by the time we debriefed, the winds picked up again, so we didn't fly in the afternoon uh, again. And the second day was kind of short, so I believe everybody was out of the base by about 4 p.m. Um, 
the first day, the, the, the ground team, actually, and whomever decided to stay uh, in the area, they went and camped out uh, in the wilderness at uh, BLM uh, lands area. And they had a, a bivouac set up. Um, they had uh, barbecue and campfire and all that stuff. Whatever they were doing, I don't know. Maybe they, there are some photographs there. I haven't been a part of that. Maybe, maybe some other day. So that's uh, in a nutshell what it, what it, it looked like. Uh, the, the goal usually at the SARX to make it look like a real deployment for the real mission. Uh, with specific objectives, so there is a formal command in the, in the, in the structure of incident command system, uh, FEMA ICS, and that uh, I believe it was, wasn't was bad, it wasn't a lot of chaos, uh, maybe first day we, we took longer to uh, get up to speed. Um, we had our IC uh, remote and uh, air, air operations branch director was also remote via Teams, so all the uh, briefings were done via Teams, and it was also part of a real-life scenario. Sometimes certain resources could be removed. And I believe it worked out good, other than uh, the whole area was kind of smaller, maybe smaller than our room. So it, it, it would get noisy at times. People start talking with each other, chatting, and networking, and whatnot, and it interfered with briefings and debriefings. Um, Chuck did a good job setting up uh, communications there, um, and we had a cadet training as a, a communications unit leader. So Chuck, uh, maybe can you say a few words uh, from your perspective, how it went? Yeah, um, good evening everybody. Yeah, it, um, it was interesting. I was originally not scheduled to be the CUL on Saturday, and then I guess uh, the CUL had another issue. So instead of doing training on Saturday, I, I was the CUL for Saturday. At any rate, um, you know, it's important to practice all of these things, whether you're training for a specific job or, um, you know, actually doing one of the functions. Um, they're both really training because when you when you go to a Cerex and act as one of the um, you know officials or in charge of a department or whatever um, that's that's as important as if you're training to be a, a particular air crew member or whatever because all those jobs are important but um, all in all I, th I think it was a good Cerex um, again it's too bad that the winds did come up in the afternoon uh, they close down some of the missions in the uh, in the afternoon but you know it, it is what it is there's not much we can do um, I do have some pictures I can try to share if uh, if you're interested let me see if uh, if I can do that <coughs> all right are you guys seeing that picture yes so that's, this area is uh, backstage of, I guess, one of their main stages. I've never been to Coachella, so uh, our, uh, our photographic mission was a little bit vague in that uh, we were just told to uh, uh, get pictures of interest. So let me scroll through a few more here. Uh, this appears to be some type of a housing area, not 100% uh, not sure uh, exactly uh, exactly what it is um it was it was uh for my first uh, mission as a airborne photographer it was fun um you can see here there's another stage here a big area i guess that's where they hang out our our mission went at about uh, 10 15 a.m something like that so i don't think they were getting started yet but i will show you some pictures of the parking lot uh there were tons of people there uh, they have a big Ferris wheel, whatever this building is, uh, you know, just items of interest from uh, uh, from that perspective. I'm going to scroll through a few of these pretty quickly. Some kind of a playground area? I, I Yeah, it's kind of yeah, so hard to know. We, we were flying in the morning, so obviously no performances are going. People were probably still sleeping after the previous night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be my guess. 
this is the parking area. Uh, it looks like a lot of people uh, kind of camped out at their cars because you can see all the all the tents and whatnot uh, uh, behind their cars and between the next row of cars. But uh, there were easily thousands of uh, thousands of cars in the uh, in the parking area. Um, interesting um, buildings and things up again. I I don't I can't speak to what they're for or what they do. Uh, but, but makes for uh, makes for some interesting pictures. Again, don't know what this building is or does. It appears to go up in kind of a like you can walk around it or something. I I really don't know. Uh, let me skip to uh, some of the pictures of uh, of the uh, lake. Sorry. So this is when we started taking shoreline pictures and what I was trying to capture, you know, it, it obviously, as Andre said, there was no flood, but if there was, you know, hopefully you would see, you know, any kind of damage or anything on the, on the feeders coming into the, into the lake. Um, again, um, hard to make stuff up. Um, this is a mistake, by the way. You, as an aerial photographer, you're not supposed to have any part of the aircraft in the picture. And you can see here, I kind of flubbed and got just a bit of that wing in there. But uh, some more close-up views of uh, like a drainage canal coming into it, uh, things like that. Uh, again, more shoreline pictures uh, in the case if there were any uh, uh, damage to uh, the shorelines or anything of that nature. I'll just scroll through a few of these. I won't, I won't bore you to tears with them. Uh, this is uh, some type of a solar project they also have going on out in the back. It really wasn't part of the mission, but I thought it was interesting enough to get in a, uh, a photograph of. Um, again, some type of a little lake. Uh, again, if in a flooding scenario, you would see that uh, flooded. Um, Again, more overall pictures. And then this is kind of a wider view of that uh, north area that they had tasked us to um, uh, get a picture of. So this is that north shoreline uh, that was discussed. So any questions? I think that's about it. I mean, there's a few more pictures, but I won't bore you to tears with, uh, with all of them. So again, this is kind of the what do they call that? The confluence going out into the into the lake. So, any questions? All right. Thank you, Chuck. So, what I'll do next? Uh, I'll show you what is going into the planning of the SARX uh, from administrative perspective. And for that, I will use. SharePoint. So, let's see. For the right page, that's the right spot. Yeah, so, uh, each team uh, decides how to <coughs> handle all the paperwork individually. And usually it starts with initiative hey, we want to do SARX. So we are planning one, for example, in July here, and now uh, headquarters premises. Uh, and it, it begins with finding someone who will act as uh, incident commander. So that's a person in charge. That's the most probably the most difficult part, because uh, uh, you need to convince someone maybe either to do it remotely or be here uh, on premises. So once you have you, you basically have to establish, when I was planning it, you have to establish the core team. Uh, and that is aligned with ICS. You have to have planning section chief, you have to have incident commander, of course. You, have to, you must have a safety officer, and safety officer does have to be on, uh, on, on, on premises. Uh, you have to have uh, each branch director, so you have a ground team uh, operations, you have, uh, you have uh, air operations, uh, you have uh, uh, what else logistics and, and so on and so forth so uh, once you learn about uh, ICS as a whole system you'll understand much better 
So uh, the, sec the planning uh, person who is in charge uh, starts giving assignments. So Air Branch uh, Director have to, has to plan all the resources uh, required for uh, air sorties. The ground uh, branch has to plan their resources, and that includes sufficient number of uh, members who will participate on specific uh, and do specific tasks. It means for the ground team having uh, vehicles, having adequate equipment on, on people, uh, radio, um, uh, and whatever else they need for ground operations. From air operations, it, it all starts with airplanes. Okay, so I, I actually was supposed to be uh, AOBD, Air Operations Branch, branch Director, uh, as I was intended to go into that uh, event, uh, but my role changed to the mission pilot because there was nobody else available as a mission pilot. So my role was taken by uh, Josh Ramzuglia, who was remote AOBD for, for the whole event. Uh, so the team starts working together and uh, the planning section chief, who is appointed uh, by incident commander, uh, uh, basically hands uh, out assignments. And each uh, section chief uh, or director is responsible for their own piece. And then they feed everything up to the planning section chief, and the planning section chief creates an incident, ac ac incident action plan. And that, that is comprised of a bunch of forms. Uh, everything is actually publicly available um, on FEMA portal. Uh, anyone who is studying for specific uh, portion of uh, uh, incident command system can get yourself familiar with all these forms. Uh, so, incident objectives, organizational assignments, uh, assignment li uh, list, and so on and so forth. And for the air operations, uh, there is a form. Where is it? There's a ground branch. It's interesting enough. Uh, Yeah, they probably used uh, the Excel form for that. So, we, thanks to Mike Swift, uh, we, uh, we have actually uh, one handmade uh, Excel uh, template for all the forms. And I can show you, for example, from original plan, the form 204 air resources, we had uh, expected five aircraft. We ended up having only two. And those happened to be at Palm Springs already. Those who were expected to fly in, either the pilot got sick or the weather got in the way. Uh, so we, we, we didn't have enough resources. Then we had um, Form 220. Uh, from planning perspective, you, you, you would start seeing not only the aircraft, but also specific crew assignments once it gets into each day of operations. So you have um, the, the aircraft, the resource, a type of resource, where it's coming from, when it becomes available, uh, etc. So for example, this one was expected only on uh, Sunday, so there is a, a remark pertaining that, etc. So it's, a, it's quite complex undertaking from planning and execution point of view. And I'm not sharing on teams and nobody complains about it. <coughs> so guys on teams, let me know if you see the screen. This is Chuck, I see. Okay. So all in all, so each day has their own set of forms, uh, which are finalized, uh, walked on through the day and finalized at the end of the day. And the, the last day of uh, exercise, you have uh, essentially the final form, which is demobilization plan, uh, where all the resources are released, where they came from, and that's not just airplanes, that's uh, mission management kits, uh, radios, uh, repeaters, uh, all the resources, and human resources, of course. So uh, when we come in, we check in, 
every day we come in, we show up, which means we are there, we show our cup ID, uh, the uh, mission staff assistant uh, actually is uh, writing down your name, actually checks you in and the rumors, uh, as, 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 as a lot of resource, and at the end of the day, we just, not just disappear, we're just supposed to come to the mission staff assistant and say, hey, I'm leaving, personal reason, whatever, and they will sign you out. Now, at the end of the day, when we do the accounting for all the resources, we don't have anyone missing. So nobody got lost in the, in the hike, and the air crew is back on the ground, and so on and so forth. So, so the, the goal is to run it as close to real life uh, scenarios as possible. And of course, we all understand it's, it's a training in progress. Most of the people in charge of specific tasks are being trained, and they're usually a mentor uh, responsible for uh, making sure that the training is efficient and effective. And uh, at the end of each day, you're supposed to sit with someone who is qualified to be your uh, uh, skill evaluator and review the tasks you have accomplished with him or her. And make sure that uh, all these tasks are signed off in the SQTR, which I'll show uh, again how to find it in, in, in um, uh, e-services. Okay, so if you sign off all the objectives you came to accomplish, great, you, you didn't waste your time there. If you missed a few, uh, maybe for reasons unrelated to specific uh, person or uh, your own, uh, maybe due to the weather, for example, you couldn't fly uh, additional sources, then you know what you're going to accomplish on your next uh, participation. Okay, many questions? Okay, so I'll show you now uh, how it looks on Wimmers from management. So, also some of these forms are uploaded as is in PDF format to the uh, actual uh, mission. So the mission for this event was 24-T-4729. And we see that uh, there is a budget, which is good news. Which I'll explain how it's relevant to us in just a moment. And you see... Uh, the resources sign in, sign out, PIO checklist, uh, maintenance not short, mission reimbursements, mission files, and so on and so forth. So if you click on mission files, if you have uh, actual rights to access this information, you will see all the forms I showed you before. Uh, okay, so there are air sorties, so we have weight and balance for each flight. Okay, and the uh, flight will not be released unless uh, weight and balance is, is actually uh, in the, in the uh, uh, corresponding sort of uh, the receipts. So we, we are flying, we are refueling the aircraft, and we are processing it against the funds allocated by US Air Force for this specific uh, exercise. Uh, so all in all, we probably spent less than half of funds allocated for, for, for this uh, event. What does it mean? It means that uh, these funds are going to be available for the period of time, usually for a month. Okay, so anyone in in the whole wing can use these funds to complete their training. And let's I'll give you an example. Harper have finished all the farm and prep prerequisites for mission scanner, so she needs uh, two actual participations and practical tasks to be signed off by the skills evaluator. So she can uh, walk with me or Terry Pratt or any other pilot in the wing uh, to arrange a flight, arrange the reserve the airplane, uh, get together, go flying, get the tasks done, ideally with uh, maybe a mission observer in training. So you have the full air crew, mission pilot, mission observer, and mission scanner. You go fly, you can use one of the uh, scenarios uh, from uh, f f from the SARC, so you can make up your own. Your mission pilot or mission observer can create this scenario. And you define uh, which uh, uh, cup grid you are going to operate in. You're going to tell your flight release officer we are going to be in this area. And you brief the sort, you debrief the sort, and you sign off the required tasks. So that's a great opportunity for anyone going through onboarding to get things done. Uh, uh, get specific uh, uh, ratings completed. And essentially, as long as, as funds are available, you, are, you could be participating in two sources, uh, given that you plan it accordingly, you find the, the required resources. Let me show what it looks from the actual 
sorted perspective. So you see, uh, we had uh, this is overall now peak, for example, 13. So we had planned five sorties for air, uh, but we had to cut it short because the, the winds, because of the winds. So you see all the air crew assignments. For example, I'll use my flight, and if I click on edit, that what usually mission observer or mission pilot would be responsible uh, for taking care of. Uh, so this is uh, SAR DF um, sortie. We were supposed to do a search and rescue and uh, uh, locate the LT. Uh, we did locate the LT, uh, but we did not uh, have a chance to identify uh, specific coordinates for it. Um, because our mission scanner got sick, so we had to knock, knock it off and come back to the base. Uh, but we managed to just uh, do initial ELT search, then we flew to the, to the grid, we started boxing the grid, and then as we approached like three-fourths of the boxing, and she's like, okay, I, I'm not, I cannot handle it anymore. <laughs> So here we see, for example, um, who is doing what. So we have myself as a mission pilot, we had uh, Alex Arnoldi as a uh, mission observer in training, and we had um, our mission scanner in training. Uh, we, are, we have an option to see the, any discrepancies with the aircraft. So when we click uh, on a link, we get all the issues um, uh, as the issues are known as of today, so you click open, that's the only part I'm concerned about. So there are three uh, entries. Uh, this is irrelevant, so essentially it's external, uh, that's a power unit, that's, uh, they're waiting for it, and that's nothing relevant for the flight. The pitot cover was <laughs> ripped, so it was useless pretty much, but was still on the airplane, so I, I requested uh, a new one. And um, the G650-500 software needs an update, so which I believe is done, but the uh, aircraft uh, maintenance officer has to verify the maintenance record and close this uh, discrepancy. And so on and so forth. So what happens uh, during the briefing portion, the um, ALBD uh, is querying the team on objectives, on known discrepancies, and so on and so forth, on the weather conditions, and with the objectives to understand. So we plan the, that specific sortie properly. Uh, we understand our roles, we understand the, our objectives. And the briefing is also documented uh, in, in the sortie. So we see that um, required radio checks, uh, other aircraft in the area, ground teams in the area, uh, all the frequencies, operations, uh, what are the objectives, ELT search, parallel, expanding square, the area of operation, 257B, um, we depart PSP, return to PSP, etc. etc. So we have uh, alternate fields, um, aircraft separation, Hazards to flight. Exactly. So, in this particular case, it was responsibility for the mission observer, so since he is in training, to actually plan the whole sortie, brief it, and debrief it as part of his SQTR sign off. And he did a good job. He is a pilot himself, and next day he has been working on uh, mission pilot qualification. So, any questions so far? Okay, so I'll go back and I'll show um, how the hybrid sortie look like. So who can fly hybrid? As soon as you become transport mission pilot, uh, you are qualified to fly hybrid with limitations. Uh, and limitation would be uh, the altitude. So if you get an assignment as a transport mission pilot to fly at, uh, let's say, 12,000 feet, uh, unless you are uh, trained uh, for uh, that kind of operations, you cannot take that mission. Or let's say your assignment is uh, flying 12,000 feet in a mountainous terrain. 
if you are not mission uh, mountains uh, uh, flight clinic uh, qualified then you cannot take that uh, assignment so you as a pilot in command would be responsible to actually assess your limitations and uh, make a decision from risk management point of view uh, so the hybrid in this case uh, they were flying 887 charlie papa so there is a tail number and there is a call sign uh, for the aircraft uh, all of this is populated aircraft related is automatically populated based on the record of the aircraft and the pilot uh, just uh, or, or mission observer they uh, fill out estimated time of departure and estimated time of uh, arrival and then in the briefing and debriefing section they specify actual data uh, as it turns out so here they had um, uh, the transport mission pilot and they had mission observer and training which they forgot to specify <laughs> let me fix it transport mission pilot mission observer i'm not uh, i will not do it it's i'm afraid it will corrupt something so the briefing portion you have already seen i'll show you it's pretty much the same so they have uh, an area where they hang out and altitude and usually once you get on station you fly at 90 knots ground speed so that's all discussed during the um, briefing sec portion of the uh, planning they also fail to specify um, specific uh, instruction for risk mitigation uh, that's something the AB should pay attention to and if uh, you look at uh, debrief let's see if they did a good job there so they specify actual hop stock uh, which helps calculating the actual cost so basically once the sortie is closed the money is available for that uh, mission gets lower and lower so if we flew all planned sorties we would not have over 4000 money left and plus some of these monies are not yet dispersed for the reimbursement of personal expenses like people were buying food people were buying gas for the for the cars and so on and so forth so um, they should have um, put a lot of much more details than they have but you see there is a actual receipt for the fuel purchased for the aircraft and that it all deducts uh, from the funds allocated for the mission and I can maybe do a quick review uh, of what the ground sources look like and they had a lot more of those so you see there is a lot more activity from the ground crew perspective because they were not limited by the high winds they maybe uh, didn't do some of the tasks but they've been out there and they cancelled only one and the actual cost for each uh, fuel refueling of that of that uh, of, of the car they were driving um, so if you look at the brief we can see some of the like relocate vehicle to Atlantic ACT okay it's not that not that important find them and report uh, the location and direct other ground team to that specific location so they can silence so this kind of process okay so good idea I think. so uh, Carex, and you want to really be effective about it uh, get done mission scanner for example uh, get done for example mission staff assistant that's very easy task to accomplish you just you will be asked to to run some kind of a log uh, maybe show the present aircraft status on the dashboard of some sort uh, 
uh, maybe uh, handle the check-in, check-out of resources uh, at the beginning and end of, uh, uh, end of the day. Making sure that the air crews are uh, dispatched to the aircraft, uh, anything of that matter. Very easy to accomplish. Uh, maybe if you are interested in communications, uh, pursue some of the communication ratings. Uh, communication unit leader is one of them, but uh, you can be a, a mission radio operator uh, and so on and so forth. So more roles you pick, more interesting it gets. Okay, and then you have more opportunities to participate in real life uh, missions if once you get specific training. So let's. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how you actually find all the specific qualifications which are uh, available. So if you log into eServices. And you go to uh, operations qualifications. Uh, once you get on this page, nothing is happening. It's like, oh, what's going on? I just click on this uh, red uh, arrow down, and it opens up a sub menu. So here you can see uh, specific uh, qualifications as you have it. And all available qualifications are uh, seen on one 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 card. So let's say you sign up for specific mission and people will ask you for your name and uh, CAP ID. So you specify it and the person who will check your qualification will go and find you by your CAP ID uh, and see what are you capable of. So here, for example, you can see I am AOBD in training. The star means uh, I am a supervised trainee. Uh, in supervised trainee status, uh, you can see that I am a, a mission pilot, and that's my expiration, which is for the pilots, it's your uh, Form 5 check right due date, right? So I'm due for the Form 5 end of May. Uh, once I get that done, my uh, I, I will get automa automatic extension of my qualification. That uh, diamond indicates uh, the uh, skills evaluator status. So I have skills evaluator uh, shown right here. I am uh, MP, MS, MSA, TMP, and more. So I can sign you off on any of these qualifications. So I'll show you also how, how you can find skills evaluator uh, in PRMA mobile app uh, once I finish with it. Uh, so this is one way to look at it, right? So that's uh, one uh, focus you on all your present qualifications. But what can you do from qualifications point of view? So if you go here and you select SKTR uh, skills qualification and training record, I believe, um, and you can see, okay, in emergency services, what are available options? So plenty of them, right? So AP, airborne photographer, um, let's say ground team, bunch of different levels for the ground team. You have ground team leader, member of level 1, level 2, level 3, incident command, etc. And you click on any of them, you see if there are any prerequisites, right? So let's click on mission observer, for example. Uh, but maybe myself would not be a good option to look at because I'm already qualified. As a, as a current observer. So let's use Harper. What is your cup ID? Okay. So you see that for Harper to get started working on a more training, she has to complete mission scanner. So as soon as mission scanner is green, uh, she will have to click on this button and hit submit and I will get notification for approval. So I will review, make sure that she has all the prerequisites for that, and I'll approve it. That, uh, that will be as simple as that. Uh, and once this checkbox is, is covered, uh, it, it opens an opportunity to start familiarization and preparatory training. So FAM and PREP, we call it, right? And you can download air crew study guide and review it at your leisure time. And whenever you feel like you are ready, for uh, a formal training. You either go to one of the 
air through schools which, which which are happening from time to time or again reinforcing it just talk to me mike uh younger uh or terry proud terry proud probably the most unavailable person from our skills evaluator and training talk to um david do you have any set qualifications yet okay so basically i'll show you how you find <laughs> sets so you go to prma uh, mobile app and that is uh, you'll see in a moment That's mobile-tools.pcrcap.org uh, and you need your uh, Microsoft Office credentials for CAP to access this resource. So CAP is weird. Some resources are uh, accessed by Microsoft login credentials like your email, Teams, PCR uh, mobile app. Uh, some require e-services login and they are managed absolutely independently from each other it's really you have to keep track of your username and password to to, to be able to access it uh, effectively so if you click on california from there and you click on set list see the diamond indicating the set status for specific person so you can look by rating uh, which is not very efficient which is my in my opinion much easier to find by the unit so we are in the group three you click on that and if you click on the riverside squadron uh, you see what kind of qualifications we have in within the squadron you can cover you have mike uh, covering abd cul terry is a mountain flying certification on mission observer we have plenty well, apart from Lon, who is in Texas now, we have enough people to help you out with it. Uh, I am now able to help Terry with MP uh, onboarding. Uh, he is Czech pilot. I am not. I cannot sign you off on Form 91, uh, but I can train you. Uh, and the rule is that whomever is training you cannot sign you off. So get your training done with me. <laughs> get, get your Form 91 with Terry. You, you are good uh, mission radio operator uh, hopefully at some point Chuck will uh, get into this uh, area as a set we have mission scanner uh, mission staff assistant mission safety officer transport mission pilot there is not much of training for transport mission pilot though <laughs> but somehow there is a set for that and uh, Chris got somehow water survival. We did we attended the same cleaning, but he he got his, I didn't get mine. Whatever, I don't really care. I'm not going to train on that. Uh, but he can train me on water survival, <laughs> surprisingly. Um that's it. Um any question? Does it make it a little bit more clear how Sarex works and what to do? At Sarex, if you get there, um, how to make it interesting and efficient for you. Hopefully, I shed some light. But until you get to one of those by yourself, you you, you are not going to really see it. And every unit runs it differently. Like Fullerton, it's pretty good structure there, I would say. Uh, I like going to Fullerton Sarex's. Whiteman, eh, a little bit hectic, like kind of all over the place uh, not so much and I've been to couple maybe three of those characters so you'll see there is a very big uh, level of quality and you know but the key thing for going to any Sarex you should know your objectives and don't be afraid to to ask for help don't just sit and wait like some people come and they expect that somebody will come and hold their hands and put them in the air crew and whatever. Not gonna happen. <laughs> you you made an effort to get to the Sarex. Make an effort to get yourself trained. And make an effort to get yourself signed off. Meet people, talk to people, find out who is the set. Find out which air crews are filled, which are maybe in need of specific position. Even if you already have uh, maybe all your uh, sign-offs 
but there is a spot in, in air crew go and fly again i mean it gives you another opportunity uh to 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 get close to specific uh training and practice it more uh, observe how other people do it etc all right I didn't see specific timeline though. So until it actually happens, and I believe there will be some warning that hey, by the way, this is going away, this is coming up. Usually in IT management, they're gonna run two platforms in parallel, I hope, <laughs> to avoid disruptions. Okay, uh, but uh, up until it happens, uh, use LMS as much as you as you can. And I recommend for every uh, course you complete, save a PDF of your certificate of completion. So in case if they mess it up and all the records are gone, you keep your certificates and you can prove you have done your part. Okay. Well, that concludes the formal part of the meeting. Um, those joining online and jason wh when are you coming to the meeting i i, I have your promotion pending <laughs> jason Enek. anyway you are muted sir so your epaulets are here and whenever you come we'll promote you formally <laughs> ah no worries that's a good excuse <laughs> hope you feel better soon Okay, meeting is over. Thank you everyone attending and have a good night.